Welcome back to Clash of Cultures. Today, we're going to be recapping the 2023 Alabama Crimson Tide season. Obviously, a season that didn't end in a national championship, so that's a bit of a disappointment for Nick Saban and his expectations. Uh, but nonetheless, a really good season from a really good team. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, please just a quick favor, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. We're going to be going strong in this recap series. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, so help us hit that mark so we can give away that signed Heisman jersey. Uh, but, Dad, how do you feel about Alabama and the way their season finished? Yeah, uh, the fortunate and unfortunate thing about the expectation is that at Alabama is that uh, every year ends in the national championship. Um, obviously, I was down on Alabama uh, from the beginning of the season. So in some ways, I would say this season really turned out better than, you know, some people suspected. They were in the playoffs. They did win the SEC again. And I think most people would have picked Georgia to win the SEC. Um, so they were the SEC champion. Obviously, they lost an overtime game um, where they played pretty well against Michigan. And we'll see how that Michigan season turns out. Uh, but you kind of seen the growing pains. Uh, you've seen this team grow. Um, so from Jalen Milrow, uh, who looked really, really bad in the uh, Texas game, uh, got pulled during the USF game, um, and then came back and came on really strong, ended the season uh, I don't want to say in the Heisman race because obviously he didn't go to New York, but he was starting to gain a lot of momentum. Uh, I think I think uh, that offense started to transform uh, to him. Uh, we seen what Burton did. Uh, we seen what McClellan did. So they were able to put it, pull it together, and, and put it together late, um, especially after they solidified that quarterback position, uh, which, like I said, early did not look great. Um, but Milrow really took the reins and got this offense going. Uh, the defense was great all season. Um, defense is, it, it's a Nick Saban defense, so you know what they're going to do. Um, a bunch of great players there. You know Kool-Aid, you know Dallas Turner. Um, so they had a great defense, uh, but that offense took a little bit to get going. Um, and then when it did, it really took off. Obviously, uh, they played well in the, in the back half of their schedule. Uh, except for the Auburn game. And, you know, that's a rivalry and you know how rivalry games can go. And then the Michigan game, they were a little bit down, especially on the offensive line, um, especially uh, in the center to quarterback exchange. Um, I'm sure Nick Saban will get a lot of that rectified. Uh, but all in all, I think this was probably not to Nick Saban's standard, but a lot better than I would have suspected that this season would have turned out for them. What's your thoughts? So obviously early on in the year when we did the preview series, I was pretty high on Alabama. I thought they were one of the top four teams um, in the country. Um, and that was me projecting that Jalen Milrow would be the starter. And obviously he did get the nod as a starter, lost the game at Texas where he didn't play very well. Um, and then we saw the game after that where they kind of tried out Buckner and Ty Simpson. And that did not work out at all. Almost, you know, pretty much almost losing that game. It was a very ugly win for them. Um, as the season kind of progressed, though, he kind of came into his own in the offense. They started running. Um, him as the lead guy, and they kind of gained some head of steam, obviously knocking off a few undefeated, not undefeated, a few um, top 25 teams um, on, on route to, you know, SEC title, um, which they beat, obviously, the back-to-back -back champs in Georgia, and then losing to Michigan, who could very well be the national champion in overtime. I don't think that is a bad season. Obviously, Alabama fans and the Nick Saban standard is championship or bust, which I completely understand because there are some programs out there that you go 10 and two and everybody looks at you like you're a failure. So I, I completely get it. Um, but I think Alabama had a really good year. This team was somewhat young. When you look at, you know, what they're bringing back, obviously Milro announced he's coming back. Um, I believe Jam Miller's coming back. I don't think um, Roydale Williams or Jace McClellan has announced yet, but they're both seniors. I don't know if they have any more years of eligibility. Um, obviously they're losing both of their corners to the draft. So that's going to be a really big loss. But they did bring over Damani Jackson from USC, who was former number one cornerback coming out of high school. So that should kind of help out. He was actually deciding between Alabama and USC before he committed to USC. So um, it's kind of a fit for them, I guess. Obviously, you have Downs coming back in the secondary. Um, so and he I'm pretty sure he's going to be freshman All-American. Um, if they haven't announced, I would assume he's a freshman All-American safety. One of the better players in that defense as a true freshman. So I think it was a success. Um, you're not going to win every single year, obviously. Um, so that's just an unrealistic approach. Um, now, this is the first time that Saban hasn't won a championship in three consecutive years, which is a little odd um, when you look at that stats. Yeah, so it's been it's been four years now. Well, it'll be four college football seasons since he's um, won the national championship, um, which is a crazy stat. And that kind of goes to um, the point of him being the GOAT at the, you know, the coaching spot. 
So I'm really excited to see how this team kind of bounces back next year. Milrow is going to be obviously the number one guy throughout the entire offseason. There were yeah. so many question marks surrounding them and the quarterback spot literally up until like the Texas game. So now that he is the guy, um, like you said, I think he finished six in Heisman. So, I mean, and he really didn't even make any noise until like week five or six is when he kind of got his footing. So yeah. I would say – like I think you you said this before, he's your Heisman favorite for next year, right? Yeah, going. I mean, and let me say, obviously, uh, with a lot can happen, a, but a lot of movement. But just off of the top of my head, right now, assuming that a bunch of the players that we think are going to leave for the NFL leave, um, yeah, I, I I think he's my early favorite for the Heisman next year. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. Um, it it gives like the Lamar Jackson kind of vibe. Obviously, the only difference is he's going to be on the best program in college football. So he's going to be surrounded by a bunch of other five-star guys and Lamar Jackson wasn't. So yeah. it's really going to come down to, is he going to be the start of the entire year? Obviously they're getting uh Julian say, and I think I miss his name. Yeah. He's out of California. Um, I don't think freshman. he's going to start as a true freshman, but um, obviously they didn't really trust him much after the Texas game. They kind of rode with him to the end. Um, so hopefully they just let him kind of be the number one guy throughout the off season and spring ball. So we can kind of get a real feel of who Jalen Miller is as a quarterback. Um, but I think they're going to be right back into the thick of things next year. Obviously, we have the 12-team playoff. We're probably going to get two to three teams from the SEC, at least two um, from the SEC, probably the runner-up in the SEC title or SEC champion. Um, so I would assume that Alabama is right back in the thick of it, and then Milrow is going to be you know, in the thick of it as far as Heisman conversations go next year. Yeah, I, so one, I would be shocked if the SEC, especially with the expanded SEC um, and, you know, the power five basically going to a power four next year um, with the PAC 12 kind of dissolving. Um, I wouldn't be, I, I'd be shocked if they don't have three teams in the top 12. I'm um, saying I would, you know, kind of say the same with the, with the big 10. I'd be shocked if they don't have three teams as well. Yeah. Just kind of knowing what I know now, which is, ver which is very limited as we are doing this video way before the season. Um, is starting um, this th this Alabama team and what they have coming back is probably one of my early favorites uh, to be a championship contender. Um, you know, if I had to say, hey, based off of what I know and who's coming back right now, who do I think is going to win the championship? And obviously, I'm an Ohio State fan. Uh, you know, obviously, we got Will Howard and we don't know who's coming back. Is Mbuka coming back? Is Henderson coming back? They haven't announced yet as we as we're making this video, but knowing what I know and what I suspect, I'd probably make Alabama my number one team uh, because I think Milrow is so dynamic. I like Jan Miller. And, you know, we talked about some of the other weapons that they're going to return. Um, this is going to be a good team. And I don't think Nick Saban is going to allow them to be down too long. Um, bringing in another great recruiting class like Alabama always does. Um, yeah. I, I, again, it is, it is a great program when you can have a 12 and two season and that's considered a down year, when you win, uh, you know, what arguably one of the toughest conferences in college football, when you knock off a back-to-back -back champion who at the time, I think had won what 27, 28 games in a row. Um, and that's considered a down season. Um, and, and again, I don't, I don't think that Alabama is going to allow theirself to not be in that national championship, not pitcher, but game uh, for too long. I suspect that, that Nick Saban is going to have these boys back humming next year. And um, like I said, they are a really young team. So yeah. I would assume, I mean, we looked at their defense this year. Their defense was, was good the entire season. Really, their offense was the only thing that kind of struggled early on. Next year, as of right now, I believe they're only losing Burton and McClellan. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if um, Royda Williams has announced yet. But pretty yeah, much that's why every, it is early. Yeah, pretty much every other receiver is coming back, though. You have Malik Benson, you have Isaiah Bond, mm -hmm. um, you have Kobe Prentice who's coming back, and then you still have obviously the guys who in the recruiting class this year, anybody who redshirted this year. So I would assume that this offense is going to take a step forward when you're giving Jalen Milrow an entire offseason, an entire spring ball camp to be the lead guy to kind of develop, you know cohesiveness with his you know his other star players around him obviously mm -hmm. he did it throughout the year and we saw that kind of progression um and the the trust outside of you know the last play call um in the michigan game which was suspect um but i think up until well, and point, there's a lot i've heard a lot even regarding that that it was supposed to be some sort of read option uh, yeah. but the low snap kind of threw off the time of the play so it's funny. Um, that center is transferring to Ohio State. Did you see that? He he is. He he's already transferred. What I think will happen, and um, so he is a great blocker. I suspect that Ohio State will move him to guard. Yeah, because he did not play well at all in that game. I didn't. I don't. 
I don't remember another time. I'm sure Alabama fans can let us in the comment section. Other times that did he play like that throughout the year? Because I feel like yeah, I don't in, that, in that game alone, there was a lot of bad snaps. And yes. I know the commentators were really trying to like say, well, Jalen Miller needs to take accountability too. There's only so much you can do as a quarterback. So, and right. when the snap is that low, you're, you're throws off the rhythm of the entire play. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and I, I think he would say, you know, had a bad game. Um, you know, maybe it was because I don't think they would have made it that far with him as the center. Um, if, he, he basically snapped the ball that bad the whole season. I think, you know, maybe the pressure got to him. Maybe it's one of those things. And with a lot of guys, it's confidence, right? You have one bad snap and then you're overthinking about it, right? Snapping it as a center is something that should almost be second nature, that I'm more worried about blocking than I am the snap because that should be automatic. And as soon as you start thinking about it, it's almost like you start overcompensating. Um, and I think that it may have been a little bit of that which is why you have a number of bad snaps in that game. But like I said, I I, I watched Alabama in a number of games, but not enough to say, I don't remember any other yeah, game I don't remember where I really was like, oh, the snaps are bad. Um, So I, I just think it was a bad game by a young guy who had probably gotten his head a little bit. Um, So yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to take him because if you look at his blocking numbers, his blocking numbers were tremendous. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, he's a starting offensive lineman for Alabama. So yeah. there's a reason why he was there. Um, and like you said, it was probably a situation where he's more worried about blocking. They did give up five sacks in the first half. So that yeah. makes, you know, that does kind of add up, but, um, Alabama fans, let us know in the comment section, how you guys feel about your team. Um, what was your expectations, um, for this year? And then, you know, how do you feel about how it ended? What's your expectations for next year? We're obviously going to do a preview later in the year, um, Absolutely. in the fall before the season starts. Um, obviously we have the national championship game tomorrow. So everything is culminated to this one game and that's going to wrap up the 2023 season. I feel like it went by super fast. Man, um, didn't it? But we're going to continue doing these recaps tomorrow. We do have a live show after the re or after the uh, national championship game, so please tune in for that one. Um, yeah, so please tune in for that one. And as always, if you're new, please like, comment, subscribe to that notification bell so you don't miss an upload. And we will see you guys tomorrow at the live show. Peace out.